Welcome back everyone. It's good to have you here. This is Professor Herring. In this video, I'm going to walk you through some extra practice problems for the second half of chapter 12. Let's begin. So for as normal with each of these problems, I recommend that you pause the video before I demonstrate how to do it. You should try it on your own and then see if you were able to get, your an get the right answer on your own before I demonstrate. Pause the video now. Welcome back. So we have an ideal gas inside of a piston compressed to half its original volume, causing the pressure to increase from 2.3 to 3.6 atmospheres. As the gas was compressed, some of it leaked from the piston. Given that the temperature was constant, what percentage of the gas molecules leaked from the piston? So we're going, we, we know here this is an ideal gas. And since we're dealing with an ideal gas and we're talking about volumes, pressures, and temperatures, we're going to use the ideal gas law. But because we're involving a change of state, the, the molecules are changing or the temperature or the, the volume's changing, the pressure's changing, we need to uh, set it as a relationship equal to R and then solve for our set first set of conditions and our second set of conditions. We're, uh, we can set those equal to each other. So P1 V1 over N1 T1 equals P2 V2 over N2 T2. And then we're asking, asked to find what percentage of molecules was lost throughout this process. So one way you can do this is by solving for the ratio of the final to the initial number of molecules. By doing that, we get this relationship. We also know that the temperature is constant throughout this process. Because the temperature is constant, we can eliminate that from the equation. And all we're doing now is looking at the change in pressure and the change in volume. Well, we're not, we're given the pressures specifically, but you're only told that the volume is changing by a factor of 50%. So the final volume is half of the original, which we can describe as the following. Now we know then there's a factor of one half involved and we can eliminate the other, uh, the volumes because we've accounted for that in the step previously. Again, what we've done here is we have substituted in one half of V1 in for V2. Those then cancel and we're left with the ratio of the moles is simply one half of the ratio of the pressures. We can plug in those values and then get that the final mole and with respect to the original mole is 78.26. By subtracting that percentage from 100, we can find out, again, this is the ratio of, um, let's just say new to old. By subtracting that, we get how much was lost. for an answer of approximately 22%. Now to see, does this make sense? Well, we are, the, the volume is increasing or the pressure is increasing by a factor of um, 50%. And we also have a factor of 50% when it comes to the volumes changing. So 50% times 50% is about um, 25%. And so that gets us pretty close to what we would expect to see here. Go ahead and pause the video and try the second problem before moving on. All right, welcome back. So we're given a mass of a sample of helium in a certain volume. We're told what the pressure is. We want to know what's the RMS speed of helium. Well, if we're looking for the RMS speed, we're going to use this equation. All we need to know is the temperature and the molar mass. R is going to be 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. And the reason for that is um, we're not going to be using 0 0.08206. And that's because when you look at the units, that's liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And remember that a joule 
is equivalent to a kilogram meter squared per second squared. And we're going to want to be looking for something that involves speeds. So the question is, what's the temperature? We know the molar mass. If we convert that into kilograms per mole, then that's usable with this relationship. And then using the ideal gas law, we can then solve for the temperature. If we know the pressure, volume, moles, and the R constant. So moles. Moles, we are told what the mass is, and we know that it's helium. So the moles is going to be equal to the, mole, the mass divided by the molar mass, which is 5 grams divided by 4 grams per mole. That gets us a total of one and a quarter moles. The volume we already have, we just need to convert from milliliters to liters. And so we can now solve for the temperature. Using the pressure that's given, the volume we calculated, the moles we calculated, and the R constant. Now again, notice that this case we're using this R constant, and that's because we're using, we have units involving liters and atmospheres. When we solve for the temperature, we get just under 317 Kelvin. Now we're ready to plug in the values. We have our molar mass, we have our temperature, and we have the R value. So we plug those in, simplify, and then take the square root. And we get that it's approximately 1400 meters per second. Okay, let's move on to another problem. Again, pause the video now, read over and try this on your own before looking at the solution. Welcome back. So in this case, we're given um, three liters of helium mixed with four and a half liters of neon, and each of those are at different pressures, but a constant temperature. We wanna know what's the total pressure in the final vessel. I would recommend for problems like this, to draw some pictures. So this is our helium, it's three liters, and its pressure is five atmospheres. We're combining that with the neon, and that's 4.5 liters and two atmospheres. The reason why drawing a picture here is helpful is because you'll notice that what we're doing is we're combining these into a single vessel that's now 10 liters total in volume and we want to know what's the final pressure. Well, you might be tempted to just add together the pressures, but we can't do that. And the reason why we can't do that is because we're changing the volume. If these were in the same volume to begin with, or if the final volume were the same, or rather, if they were in the same volume to begin with, then we could just add the pressures, but we can't. So what we can do, however, is we can independently solve for the pressure of each one within the new container. And that's, a, that's applying Dalton's law of partial pressure. So we can use this relationship. This is just derived from what we've seen earlier where we've had P1, V1 over, R, over N1, T1 equals P2, V2 over N2, T2, and simplifying because the moles and the temperature are constant. So for helium, our initial pressure is five atmospheres and our initial volume is three liters. The final pressure is 10 liters. So we can find the final pressure, which is one and a half atmospheres. We then repeat that process, but for neon and its values. And again, notice that they both end up with the same final volume. However, because they were in different initial conditions, they have different final pressures. Then applying Dalton's law of partial pressure, we can add together those total those pressures to get our total pressure of 2.4 atmospheres of pressure. Okay, let's try another one. Pause the video now, try this on your own to see if you can get it. Welcome back. So in this question, we have a balloon that's filled with helium at two liters and one atmosphere and 25 degrees Celsius. What's the volume of the balloon if it were placed in a freezer at negative 10 degrees Celsius? Assume that the pressure does not change upon placing the balloon in the freezer. Again, we're looking here at the ideal gas law. Hydrogen is, or helium is small enough, the temperature is high enough, even though it's at room temperature, that it's going to behave ideally. And so, as before, we take and we solve for R, 
both from the initial and the final conditions, and we can set those equal to each other. We're told that the moles are constant, and we're told that the pressure does not change. Therefore, we can simplify into just the change in the volume and the temperature. We're asked to find the final volume, and so we solve for final volume, and then we can plug in our values. Now, you might be tempted to plug in negative 10 degrees here and 25 degrees C here, but that would get you a negative volume. It's impossible to have a negative volume. This demonstrates for you exactly why you need to convert from Celsius to Kelvin for each of these calculations. After we do so, we can see that the volume changes by approximately 20% to a final volume of 1.8 liters. This should make sense because what we've done is we've decreased the temperature. And we know that when we decrease the temperature, the average kinetic energy goes down, the molecules aren't hitting as hard, and they're going to take up less space. All right, we have one question left in this video. Go ahead, pause the video now, read over, and try and solve this on your own before coming back. Welcome back. If the atmospheric pressure is 755 torr, what's the total pressure of all gases other than nitrogen and oxygen? So how do we do this? Well, we know that Dalton's law of partial pressures says that the sum of all of the partial pressures is going to equal the total. In other words, we could sum up the partial pressures of each of the gases and that would find the total gas. To find the partial pressures, however, of the other gases, we would need to use the mole fractions of nitrogen and oxygen and we can sum together all of the other gases into the other gases category. Again, the re and the reason why we're doing this is because we want to know what's the total partial pressure of all of, of the other gases, the ones other than nitrogen and oxygen. So we can kind of just clump them together. So if we solve for the other gases, we would see that we subtract the nitrogen and the oxygen from the total pressure. We know that the partial pressure of a given gas is equal to the mole fraction times the total pressure. So since nitrogen is, takes up approximately 78% and oxygen approximately 21%, that those are going to occupy the majority of the pressure, leaving less than 1% really for the other gases. So we would expect then our final pressure to be somewhere around 1% of the total. So let's solve for nitrogen and oxygen independently. Nitrogen's partial pressure is the mole fraction times the total, which is 0 0.78084 times 755 torr, and that's 589.53 torr. Oxygen is calculated the same way, but using its mole fraction and the total pressure. If we take and subtract those from the total pressure, we can find the partial pressure of all of the other gases combined which turns out to be 7.33 torr. And as we estimated, that is approximately 1% of the total pressure. And again, this should make sense because when we look at the mole fractions, these are about 0.989, so almost 99% of the total. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have questions, ask on Piazza, in office hours, or in recitation. Have a good day.